In this particular video, we are looking at the grand summary of aerobic respiration, where the glucose is broken down into 2-pyruvate, the 2-pyruvate becomes 2-acetyl-CoA, the 2-acetyl-CoA enters the Krebs cycle, and it's completely broken down. And in the process of breaking down the organic molecules, you do get a little bit of ATP, okay, um, through substrate-linked reaction. But the main bread and butter of this reaction is to produce those uh, reduced hydrogen carriers. Uh, those hydrogen carriers, reduced NAD and reduced FADs, will then go into the inner mitochondrial membrane, where they'll undergo oxidative phosphorylation, and then a process known as chemiosmosis happens to produce ATP. This is aerobic respiration, by the way. We covered why is oxygen important? Because oxygen is the final electron acceptor. Remember, if there is oxygen, the electrons can move through the ETC, chemiosmosis. The oxygen is the final electron acceptor, right? And if oxygen is uh, present, the electrons can continue moving in the ETC, chemiosmosis can continue, and NAD is regenerated. And when you regenerate the NAD, that NAD can go back to glycolysis, link reaction, and Krebs cycle to carry more hydrogen atoms. And what happens if oxygen was not there? The electron stops flowing in the ETC, uh, hydrogen ions are not pumped into the intermembrane space, and chemiosmosis cannot happen, and you may not be able to regenerate NADs or FADs. And therefore, the link reaction and Krebs cycle stops. But notice, I did not say glycolysis stops. I only say that link reaction and Krebs cycle stops. But glycolysis, the weird thing about glycolysis is it can continue even in the absence of oxygen. How is that possible, by the way? Um, the answer to that is due to a process known as anaerobic respiration. Now, just a quick run-through of anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is the respiration in the absence of oxygen. If you have done O-levels uh, for biology, if you haven't, don't worry, but if you have done O-level biology, uh, you would be told that anaerobic respiration happens only in the cytoplasm. It does not involve the mitochondrion at all. In animals, the glucose is broken down into something called lactic acid, two molecules of it, and the, in plants or yeast, the glucose goes through a slightly different pathway where it's broken down into two molecules of carbon dioxide and two molecules of ethanol, C2H5OH. This only happens when the cells do not have enough oxygen to work with. Oh, yeah. and also they produce a little bit of ATP. So how is that even possible, right? we are going to see the process of anaerobic respiration in animals. We always start off with the glucose molecule first, all right? And the glucose molecule will undergo a process known as glycolysis. Actually, it does undergo glycolysis. So in glycolysis, remember, you have to spend two ATP molecules to make the glucose more reactive, and then it becomes fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. I'm not going to go through that in detail. You can go back to the video in glycolysis to see that, yeah? But in the end, it does actually produce two reduced NADs and four ATP molecules in the process, and also the end product are two pyruvate molecules. This is the process of glycolysis. So you might be thinking, hey, wait a second, this is just glycolysis. Um, we want to talk about anaerobic respiration here. So, what is supposed to happen to that reduced NAD? That reduced NAD, if you remember, was supposed to go into the inner mitochondrial membrane, and it was supposed to undergo the process of oxidative phosphorylation and chemiosmosis. And if oxidative phosphorylation happens, that reduced NAD will then be regenerated back into NAD, and that NAD was supposed to go back to glycolysis so that it can continue carrying more hydrogen atoms in the process. This was a continuous process that was supposed to happen. This only happens if oxygen was present in the area. But now we have a problem. The problem over here is there is no oxygen. And if there is no oxygen or a lack of oxygen in the mitochondrion, what's the problem then? The problem is, well, that reduced NAD cannot be regenerated. Why can't it be regenerated? I have explained that in another video, which I'm putting a link at the top right corner over there. So we have a problem. 
The problem here is that reduced NAD cannot be regenerated due to the fact that the cells have a lack of oxygen. So, what happens now? This is when the cell switches it up a little bit. It will take the pyruvate. Now, I want you to look at the chemical formula for pyruvate. You don't have to memorize it, by the way. I'm just putting it over there. C3H4O3. Okay? Don't memorize this. The cell will convert the pyruvate into something called lactate. And when it converts it to lactate, lactate is C3H6O3. Now, I want you to look at pyruvate's chemical formula and lactate's chemical formula. What's the difference? The difference is pyruvate has 4 hydrogen, lactate has 6 hydrogen. So if the cell wants to convert pyruvate into lactate, what does it need to do? The pyruvate needs to receive hydrogen. Now where does that hydrogen come from? Now here's the brilliant thing. The reduced NAD will donate the hydrogen towards the pyruvate. And when it donates the hydrogen, I know I just put one hydrogen atom, but it's actually two. Um, when it donates the hydrogen atom to the pyruvate, the pyruvate is converted to lactate. So you might be thinking, okay, fine. It does, you know, it gave the hydrogen to um, pyruvate and the pyruvate is now converted into lactate. So what's the big deal? Because the reduced NAD has donated the hydrogen atom towards pyruvate, NAD is automatically regenerated. You see? Because the reduced NAD is no longer holding on to the hydrogen. So here, it provides a rather shorter loop, and the re it, it just basically regenerates the NAD in the process. This is good because the NAD is regenerated and it can continue going on the process of glycolysis if it wants to, even though there is a lack of oxygen. This process is known as lactate fermentation because fermentation is a process where it happens without oxygen. By the way, you must also know that to convert pyruvate into lactate, you require an enzyme, and the name of the enzyme is called lactate dehydrogenase enzyme, by the way. So you do need to remember the name of that enzyme because they may ask that in the exams. But what happens to the lactate? The beautiful thing about the lactate is the lactate will be transported to the liver, where inside the liver, if your cells have enough oxygen and ATP, um, the lactate can be reconverted back into glycogen or pyruvate. Uh, the glycogen can be stored inside the cell, and the pyruvate, if there is enough oxygen, it can enter the link reaction if it wants to. Okay? Now, a lot of times students are like, uh, can you please elaborate on this further? Okay, I'm going to show you a simple diagram over here. As you can see, in the cytoplasm, can you see there's one glucose, there are two glucose molecules over here, and there are two NADs, not reduced NADs, but two NADs. All right? Now, let's say, right now, I want to carry out the process of glycolysis. Is it possible? The answer is yes, because the first glucose molecule will undergo glycolysis and it will become pyruvate. And in the process of becoming pyruvate, it needs two NADs, by the way. Two NADs are involved in this process. The two NADs will receive the hydrogen and become two reduced NADs. So far, so good. So let's look at this problem here. The problem here right now is the cell does not have enough oxygen. So can the reduced NAD go towards the electron transport chain and can it be regenerated back into NAD? The answer is no, it can't. And look at this other glucose molecule. There's another glucose molecule over there. Can that glucose molecule undergo glycolysis? No, because there is no NADs. Because you remember, you need two NADs for glycolysis to happen. So here is where the cell does anaerobic respiration. So look at the pyruvate and look at the reduced NAD. The reduced NAD will donate or release the hydrogen, and the pyruvate accepts the hydrogen, and the pyruvate becomes lactate. This is catalyzed by an enzyme known as lactate dehydrogenase. So why is this good or why is this amazing is because when the reduced NAD releases out the hydrogen, that reduced NAD will go back and it will regenerate into NADs again. 
This is good because look at the glucose now. Can it undergo glycolysis? Yes, it can undergo glycolysis because that NADs have been regenerated quickly. So glycolysis can keep going on. Now, some of my students have asked me this question. They're like, okay, if this process can continuously happen, why don't our cells just do glycolysis and produce four ATP molecules? The answer is very simple. Anaerobic respiration is not a sustainable process in your cells. Yes, you do get ATP, but you get very little ATP. Um, so it's not enough to support your cells, one. And number two, when you produce too much lactate, they can also be, form something known as lactic acids. And when you, if you have too much lactic acids, especially in your blood, uh, it can lower the pH of your blood and cause more problems. So aerobic respiration is still the way to go. If you remember, we were also looking at the anaerobic respiration of plants and yeast, and I told you that the pathway is slightly different, okay? So in anaerobic respiration in plants or yeast, um, it undergoes a process known as alcohol fermentation. The good thing is, it will still undergo glycolysis first. So glycolysis, the glucose is broken down into two pyruvate molecules. You do get four ATP, you do get two reduced NAD. So far, so good. But here is where it's slightly different. First, the pyruvate, each of them, three carbon molecules, they will undergo a process known as decarboxylation. What is decarboxylation? They will remove a carbon group. And in this case, each pyruvate will remove one carbon. And that's when you get two carbon dioxide. This will form a molecule known as ethanol, which is a two-carbon molecule. As you can see there, CH3CHO. Some students will ask me, do I have to remember this? Yes, you do. Now, for ethanol to be converted into ethanol, I want you to look at the chemical formula of ethanol and ethanol, by the way. Ethanol has two carbons, four hydrogens, and one oxygen. Ethanol has two carbons, six hydrogen, and one oxygen atom. So, to convert ethanol into ethanol, what needs to happen? It needs to receive hydrogen. Where does the hydrogen come from? Obviously, it comes from the reduced NAD. And when the reduced NAD re provides the hydrogen to ethanol to be converted into ethanol, this is good because the reduced NAD will be converted back into NAD. And when you regenerate NAD, why is this good? Glycolysis can continue to happen. And to convert ethanol into ethanol, the name of the enzyme that catalyzes that process is alcohol dehydrogenase. Now, if you remember, in lactate fermentation, the lactate can be transported to the liver and it can be converted back into glycogen or pyruvate, right? But ethanol here is a bit of a problem because it cannot be reversed back into pyruvate. And this is bad for the plants because if they have too much ethanol, it's too toxic. And the plants, no, the plants will not, the plants or yeast will not become drunk, by the way. Um, it will just die off. The cells will die if there are too much ethanol inside the plant. So this is quite a bad thing for plants if they undergo anaerobic respiration. So by comparison, the two of them, anaerobic respirations, let's look at the similarities. For animals and plants or yeast, they happen in the cytoplasm and they involve glycolysis. But in animals, the end product is lactate. But for plants and yeast, the end product is CO2 and ethanol. The enzyme required for anaerobic respiration in animal is lactate dehydrogenase. Plants or yeast uses alcohol dehydrogenase. Um, animals do not have decarboxylation. Therefore, they don't produce CO2 during anaerobic respiration. But plants and yeast do. There is decarboxylation. Last one, can pyruvate be, be regenerated in anaerobic respiration? For animals, yes. Plants, no. This is what we have to understand about anaerobic respiration. The goal of anaerobic respiration, you must understand this, the main purpose of anaerobic respiration is just to regenerate the NADs as quickly as possible so that glycolysis can continue. If glycolysis continues, at least the cells can get some ATP, okay? Because remember, there was a lack of oxygen, oxidative phosphorylation has stopped.